Chancellor David Gonski, Interim Dean Professor Eileen Baldry, graduates, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen. Personally, it's a wonderful honour to stand here before you today and I thank Professor Eileen Baldry for the invitation to give this occasional address. Firstly, I want to congratulate each of you for achieving this remarkable milestone in your life. You are not here today just because you were lucky. Luck does not deliver degrees. You all applied yourselves in different ways to the multifaceted task of finishing your degree. And you have succeeded. Well done. It is your day, and you deserve to be proud of your achievement. Like you, I graduated from this university, but that was back in 1972, several decades before most of you were born, which is actually a bit of a shock to me when I think about it. <laughs> like you, I was thrilled to graduate, but it was only later that I thought about some of the other important attributes that my time at university gave me. Today, I want to encourage you to urgently make the best use of everything you have done and learned on this campus, every opportunity that the university has given you during your studies. Whether you've been part of a student group, a sports team, a university club or a community project, please don't discount these experiences, make use of them. Through your time as a student in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, you have been given the opportunity to be exposed to a wonderfully broad education. You may not realise it, but you have had to employ and demonstrate self-discipline, -dis critical analysis, self-confidence and teamwork to complete your studies. All wonderfully strong attributes that will help you in your future working life and in life in general. Think about what you have got from your university experience and carry it with you. As I said, finishing a degree is a multifaceted task, which means to achieve that, you have also become multifaceted. You have demonstrated you can meet challenges and overcome difficulties. A little bit of personal history. Um, my first job after graduation was a graduate cadet at the Sydney Morning Herald. Apart from having to learn the dreaded shorthand, my job was to find out the who, what, when, where and why of potential stories I was assigned. This was, of course, well before the internet or Google, and my main vehicle for information was my trusty landline phone on a tiny desk with an old Olivetti typewriter gathering information from contacts and newspaper clippings. In those days, I was sent out with a photographer and a driver to get the story. And boy, was that an education in itself. It seemed a far cry from attending tutorials, writing essays, and researching modern history in the library. But I came to realize that what I had learned at this university was helping me in this very different environment to pull material, pictures, words, quotes, opinions, all together into a simple story that would make sense to the reader. But hey, I left newspaper journalism after several years and went to America, as the Chancellor mentioned. I ended up starting a radio company in San Francisco, an exciting, heady, and at times exhausting experience. Nevertheless, it was a career change that I never regretted. But it wasn't newspapers or radio that turned out to be my huge passion. It was my 30-year-plus career in publishing books and magazines at Hogwarts Publications. And now I'm running Women's Sport New South Wales, a not-for-profit organisation whose core objective is to help increase participation of women and girls in sport on and off the field. This has taken me from a purely commercial environment to one that includes government, corporations, local councils, sporting organisations, and champion athletes. Who would have thought? So in a sense, 
I am into my third or fourth career when I make up my mind, and I am eternally grateful. Compare this to my parents' generation and others when many people had one career only and a gold watch or to look forward to on retirement. Today is different. We all expect to have multiple careers. The first job you get won't be your last, and that's exciting. To know that graduating here today is the start of an amazing journey. Like me, there are many examples of people who started brand new careers in their 40s, 50s and 60s. Such as the Australian gentleman who moved from running a global research company to overseeing the phenomenal growth of an international linguistic company, today to running a national rugby organisation. The female judge, who after starting with a science degree, took up law and became a senior counsel before being appointed to the federal court for many years, and who now just wants to do something else again. The gentleman who was hugely successful as a financial entrepreneur, built his own company from scratch, and has now founded a large national organisation dedicated to protecting the welfare of animals. A little different from finance, wouldn't you say? And to the woman who started the Women's Press in London, who moved to Australia, became a successful author and columnist, and then years later moved to New York to study and is now back here practicing as an interfaith religious minister. You too will have varied careers. With the advances in technology, people will not just be tied to one career path, let alone any one way of doing a job. The fact is that research tells us that with the rapid rate of change in technology, we don't even know today what 80% of the jobs will be in 2025, and that's just 10 years away. The good news for you is that underlying these rapid changes, I believe culture and the arts will always remain the underpinning of our society. The creative forces and directions may change, but the need for a broad education will always be there. In my experience over the years in looking for the right people to fill various jobs and positions in the organisations I've directed, I have had two main criteria. The most important one is attitude. A person's willingness to really want to understand, adapt and succeed in doing a good job. The second sign I look for is whether an applicant has pursued some sort of extracurricular activity, whether it's sport, art, music, politics, community, whatever. Because this indicates to me that they may have additional strengths and self-discipline. So seriously think about what you have enjoyed and learned from your time here and carry it with you into your life and your community. Also today, I would like to congratulate the university on its widespread support of the arts and social sciences. As a past graduate, I am of course a little biased, but I must say the scope and reach and help this faculty has provided, whether it's supporting the Sydney Film Festival, helping reduce the isolation of people in housing commission flats in various parts of Sydney, working with the family and community services, or through support of the Sydney Writers' Festival. All these are very admirable initiatives. For the University of New South Wales to have a social engagement, to have social engagement as a key strategic goal at the same level as academic excellence is, I believe, truly visionary. So in my mind, this great university today provides what I would call a policy of reaching out and giving back. As graduates, I trust that you will continue to be uh, these two very worthwhile goals and that you will also reach out and give back to your communities as you move ahead in life. Thank you. <laughs>